Hello everybody, welcome back to IZD DWF uh, repair videos. Uh, what we have here today uh, are two acoustic coupler modems uh, from the probably early 70s um, because of the construction they are this uh, wooden box and uh, that's, uh, that I haven't found uh, much information about these two particular models but uh, we'll see uh, how they are made inside and see if we can make them work again so let's start with uh, the first uh, and see what we find inside here the first one is a DCD acoustic coupler model AC 35 OM 30 oh sorry 350 OM KNN Electronics Limited uh, Miter Head it has uh, an half and full uh, selector a data carrier indicator uh, oh, oh, I mean data probably is a uh, data transmission and carrier is another indicator carrier present and main uh, mains indicator and uh, on off switch this is the place where you go to the headset it has a space for the cord to exit when uh, this one should be closed uh, for not picking up much external noise during operations it is uh, in quite uh, good shape considering the age and on the other side uh, we have uh, the connectors this should be uh, uh, RS232 or equivalent connection this is a uh, um, current loop 20 milliampere uh, kind of interface uh, fuse holder and the power input uh, so let's try to open it and see what we find inside uh, I will replace of course the the power uh, plug which is a UK version uh, with a vintage one but uh, more suitable uh, to my country sockets this one and I've also found a problem there is a, an opening in the power cord but the individual insulations are okay so I will uh, uh, use some uh, piece of uh, heat shrink topping to cover the uh, the open and the insulation uh, and uh, make it shrink to fit uh, the, the power cable okay this can be opened by removing uh, um, for uh, screws from the bottom side and we can extract the electronics which is uh, composed of many uh, well different PCB boards there are five of them unfortunately two of them were floating around uh, inside the case this one which goes here fortunately the position uh, was uh, still uh, 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 understandable from the position of the fallen uh, boards and this one which is the heavier ones with the big electrolytic capacitors was on the first position what happened is that uh, the connectors were broken you see the broken connector uh, this is also broken uh, uh, that's probably because of the weight of the boards during transport so I have to see if I can uh, remove these connectors and try to glue them or obtain new ones there's not much else I can do in this uh, 
this situation. Um, the boards were are not supported by anything. Uh, they probably touch the. Um, well, no, I don't think they they arrived to touch the floor of the the compartment. So they basically stay in place only because of the force of the connection, the matting connection. So it's not very uh, thoughtful design in this case. Mechanical, mechanically, is not stable. The board can uh, wiggle around. Uh, can break the connections because it's not supported by anything on the side or on the top. But anyway, uh, we'll see if we can uh, fix these connectors and um, make the whole electronic uh, work. By the way, this is one of the boards. Uh, this one has uh, three integrated circuits and mostly passive components, uh, discrete transistors and uh, electrolytic capacitors well from the date code of the components uh, this one is uh, an operation amplifier date code is uh, 1974 12 uh, week of 1974 this one was made also in 74 and this one has a 1973 date code but probably this whole object uh, was made uh, somewhere in uh, sometime in 1974 okay I remove the first connector the one uh, which uh, holds the heaviest port it is basically disintegrated almost so i'll try um, to glue this uh, back in uh, place but probably have to find uh, some uh, replacement okay my current attempt is to glue back the two connectors that are removed i also added uh, some uh, super glue around this little crack here uh, just because it may uh, enlarge open or something so but i don't feel like removing uh, all also this connector just because of this little crack at the moment and these other two are in good condition as far as i can see now while I wait that the glue uh, use the epoxy on these two connectors uh, cure it's a good idea to go on every uh, PCB and uh, check the electrolytics for ESR check every diode, uh, every junction of uh, the transistors and also on these vintage boards uh, the carbon composition resistor that may go high in resistance with the with the years so basically for testing circuits uh, make sure that they don't read uh, higher than the rated uh, resistance they may read low uh, lower if uh, they have something else in uh, parallel but usually they can be, they can be tested fine in circuit they, they don't usually go lower than the rated resistance they uh, usually go higher so and also I will uh, um, try to draw uh, every port uh, circuit on on KiCad to have a, a schematic um, because it will be um, useful if I have to make uh, some troubleshooting so I will try to draw the schematic of every board and also the uh, the motherboard uh, and it will, won't be that easy but not also impossible because if you see every wire has a color code 
you see that these two little piece of plastic uh, uh, they have number and also the color is uh, the same of the resistance color code so red is two green is five uh, maroon is uh, one uh, orange is three uh, yellow is four and so on so every wire is uh, coded as a number so you can follow around where it goes and you identify the right connection uh, they don't make those things uh, <laughs> anymore uh, like this so uh, I will try to draw the schematic or everything it will take time but um, uh, it would be useful uh, for troubleshooting if uh, needed oh, by the way earlier I identified this chip uh, as having a 74 date code but I, I couldn't find any ITT 7210 uh, um, integrated circuit so it must be a 7401 which is a, a TTL uh, NAND gate yes with open collector outputs and so this uh, is uh, actually the date code which is uh, the 10th week of 1972 uh, yes of course standard 74 TTL existed at the time so it may be possible and depend out uh, the, the, the it's uh, compatible with uh, the 7410 uh, sorry the 7401 uh, logic uh, chip okay glue is uh, cured by now I try to insert uh, uh, one of the boards and I will check that uh, contact uh, reliable and then if uh, everything is okay I will solder the back uh, these two connectors in the back plane and probably uh, I can try to power to power on okay I solder back uh, the two connectors I only installed uh, the PCB number 5 which is uh, power uh, uh, supply inner power supply regulator this should uh, produce three different voltages and probably plus 15 or plus 12 uh, minus 12 uh, or minus 15 and plus 5 and yeah it didn't smoke i just powered it on you see the nice uh, neon lamp and let's check the output voltages there are two variable resistors one here and one here probably that would be for um, regulating uh, some of the power supply so i'll try so i've found a, a regulation for what seems to be plus 12 it was uh, 11.8 so i adjusted uh, one of the trimmer to have plus 12 or something like that um, <laughs> cannot make it uh, 12 uh, on my meter but uh, it was only more or less so I leave this one which is enough plus 12 okay I also took it a bit uh, the minus uh, 12 supply it started at minus 11.92 so it was really closer uh, but anyway that's uh, much closer to minus 12 uh, as close as, uh, as it can be and this power supply seems uh, rock stable in voltage but anyway i didn't put the old, uh, the other boards so uh, it didn't drift so far uh, while i'm 
trying to measure and uh, uh, regulate but uh, we'll see when I can plug all the boards okay one first possible issue this is the board uh, number one and I'm testing the transistors in particular this one this is the base collector and this is the base emitter voltage drop is a bit too high should be around 0 0.6 to 0 0.7 and something but uh, this is a bit too high I'll uh, show you another one now the red uh, uh, probe of the multimeter is on the base uh, of the transistor which is the, the center leg on this one they are all the, all the same model uh, they are ME4101 and this one shows 0.7 uh, and 16 and 0.730 so they are all the same but on, but this one uh, which has a uh, north dot of 0.8 volts on both junctions so I will take out this from the, the PCB and make some more tests Okay, since I suspected that um, the higher uh, voltage drop uh, base to emitter and base to collector was indicating a bad transistor or very marginal one, this is the data sheet of the ME4101 and uh, try to reproduce this uh, collector characteristics with my core tracer and see what happens on the bad um, supposedly bad transistor and some uh, new old stock ones that I just received uh, well just to recap this is one volt per division uh, horizontally two milliamps per division vertical and uh, if you read the base step is 10 microampere per step this is zero of course 10 microamp on base current 20 30 and so on so here's my curve tracer setup 10 microamp base step this is the new transistor or new new stock actually this is the original one on the right socket we have the original one and horizontal sensitivity one volt per division and vertical uh, two milliamp per division so let's see what we see on the screen but the curve doesn't look uh, very good actually because you see the the drop in the voltage, the saturation voltage is too high. It's this part uh, should be much higher, much closer to zero volt on, as on the data sheet. So let's switch to the new stock. Um, let's let's look more or close to the data sheet actually the saturation voltage is very near to zero so it means that the current depends on the base current and not on the Bussy voltage uh, from collector to a meter so actually this is uh, much better is the switch again on the, on the original one but this this has a um, higher dissipation higher um, distortion more most more than dissipation uh, probably there is some uh, resistance added inside I don't know uh, but uh, I won't use this one again um, probably it would be good for a guitar effect <laughs> but uh, on the modem uh, on the acoustic coupler I will uh, use a 
the one of the new all stock ones I could have used uh, any um, BC547 uh, uh, which is much uh, better than those old transistors but I uh, thought I'd just uh, keep the old acoustic coupler uh, as original as possible anyway uh, let's see what happens when I put together uh, again the, the acoustic coupler and I can now test what happens